I can remember over 20 years ago when I was a young teen watching various action movies and seeing actors' physiques and thinking, man, it would be awesome to look like that. And now that I'm watching those same movies with my kids, I'm seeing those actors and being like, man, that dude actually looks pretty small. I don't know what I was thinking. And the reason for that is because the stakes have been raised so much now with actors like Thor or Chris Hemsworth and then Chris Evans with Captain America and how big these stars are. So we're going to go back and look at various actors' physiques throughout the past few decades and see what you could realistically achieve if you put in the time and work. Before we get started, comment down below what your ideal superhero physique is, whether it's someone from the past, present, if you think it's actually achievable naturally. I'd be interested to see what y'all think. First up here, we've got Spider-Man, the original one with Tobey Maguire. And I remember watching this, I was about 14 years old, and uh, this scene where he comes in and you know he got bit by the spider and then he looks in the mirror and he's like, wait, what's going on? First he realizes his eyesight's better, then he looks in the mirror, he's like, wait, what? And I remember seeing this thinking, man, look at that, it'd be awesome to look like him. And you look at this and you think, he's really not that big, he just looks like an athletic guy that goes to the gym. And the key to this is he is quite lean. So you can see the abs clearly. If you can see your abs, people are gonna think you're pretty fit, even if you don't have huge muscles. You see his chest, he's got some veins in the arms sticking out and all that, so the guy's looking good. And the interesting thing with this is when I was researching it some, here in this scene, they recorded this, I believe it was uh, six months prior to the bulked up scene later on. So this was actually him. It's, they didn't say it's CGI, but you see how small his arms look. He's pretty lean, so you can still see abs, but this is what I mean. If you're super lean, if you don't have any muscle, you're just gonna look like a twig like he does here. But between that and then six months later with him looking like this, that is a pretty incredible transformation. It said that he worked out six days a week. I read four hours a day. That sounds a little ridiculous. You don't need to work out that long. You're not gonna get a whole lot out of it. You could definitely do this naturally. Did he? That's a good question because six months between the first and this is pretty intense. Like to put on that much muscle doesn't seem realistic, but over a few years of training, you could definitely achieve this if you're working out hard, getting the diet right, all that type of stuff. But let's move on to the next one. I remember watching this movie as well. George of the Jungle. So we got Brendan Fraser here. Once again, guy looks cut. He's super lean, but when I look back at it now, you know, he has some chest muscles. You can see his abs, so that's the first thing that stands out. If you have abs, you look like you work out, but you look at his arms, they are quite small. Like, the dude's not huge by any means. And then you go on further, and you look at a full body shot here from the side. Once again, his arms don't look huge, but one thing here is the legs. It seems like these guys don't really work out their legs because there's not a whole lot of muscle to see there, but he's lean, nothing crazy here. If you get the pose just right, the lighting you see here, look at that shoulder, it's really popping there. You see some muscles in the arms, even though they're not big, because of the way his arms against his body, it makes it look bigger. The chest is standing out a lot here, even though it's really not that big. And his legs, once again though, are quite small. And again here, you see he's flexing really hard, and this is how you know you're lean. When you see your veins sticking out and your shoulders going up through your chest, I read about this, Brandon Fraser said he was starving during this and it was really hard for him. And it's true, even if you're not really huge and muscular, if you get super lean, it's hard to maintain. And uh, you see this, you see chest striations, shoulder striations, veins popping out everywhere in the traps. So dude looks good. If you look like this, people are gonna think you look good, but he's really not that big compared to today's standards. Because when you're not flexing, you see here, you got the abs, you look good. The chest, it's really not that big. It's not pumped up. If he was just wearing a t-shirt, like he would just look like a, probably a skinny dude. And one more example from 1999, we have Fight Club. So many people wanted to have Brad's Pitt's physique. You see this all over, how to get Brad Pitt's physique in Fight Club. But this to me looks a lot like Brendan Fraser in George of the Jungle. He's super lean, his abs are crazy to find. You see the obliques, but look at his arms. They look just as small as Brendan Fraser's did in George of the Jungle. And his chest, it looks bigger than uh, George of the Jungle, but it's still not that huge. He's just a thin, athletic looking guy. He's lean enough to see his muscles. And that's what the big thing is, because most people have excess body fat on them. So even if they have muscles, you can't see them. You don't look that defined. You don't really look like you work out that much. But when you cut down like this, it makes a huge difference. But, why do all these guys look so good? If looking back at it now, it's like, oh, they're really not that big. Well, if we go back even further, let's see some of the original action stars. Bond. James Bond. James Bond, he's iconic, superhero, women love him, all that type of stuff. Sean Connery was the original one, 1962, Dr. No. And look at this here, in a swimsuit, just a normal dude. He's not cut, 
He really doesn't have much muscle. The arms look small. He's got a lot of hair on his chest. He's not shaving everything. You see his back, there's not really muscle, anything. His legs, nothing special. He's just a normal dude, average looking guy who looks good in the face. I guess that's what they were going for more so back then because it wasn't a big deal to have all the muscles. And that's pretty much how it was over the next 30 plus years with actors just acting essentially, not having to have a body that fits the role or not necessarily that it doesn't fit because that's not what was expected at the time. Make the exception, the caveat there for Arnold because they pretty much took a bodybuilder in the 70s or I guess 80s and started putting him in roles that fit his body. That's what he was built for. And uh, you know, stuff like Terminator, Predator, all that type of stuff. It was made for him essentially. But aside from that, all the other type of guys were nothing special. We move up to the mid 90s all the way to 2002 and we had Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. And you can see here, just a normal looking dude still, just like Sean Connery, he's not fat. He doesn't really have a ton of muscle. You know, you can't really see his abs or anything, but his stomach's basically flat. He's got a bunch of chest hair and nothing shaved, stomach hair, all that. And you see his arms here, they're pretty small, normal looking guy, no big deal. But then you have the James Bond reboot in 2006, Casino Royale with Daniel Craig. And each movie he's been in, he's brought the physique. You see him here getting out of the ocean, looks muscular, small swimsuit and all that. And the big thing with him is, even here, he's not crazy huge, but compared to all the James Bonds before him, he's a muscular looking guy, similar to Fight Club, similar to Spider-Man, but he's not overly huge. He looks like an athletic, good looking dude who's lean enough to see his muscle. You take a guy like Pierce Brosnan here, put him in the gym consistently on a good program, good diet, lose some fat, build muscle, and you could go from that to looking like Daniel Craig here in a few years because this isn't something that's unattainable. I think I'm bigger probably than Daniel Craig is right here, just from training hard for a few years. And it's definitely possible, but you gotta get the training and diet down and be consistent, push yourself hard. But then we go from that to when Marvel started really pushing the superheroes. 2011, we've got Chris Evans. And the thing that's funny to me with this is that a lot of people think that these guys are natural, which I don't have proof that they're not, but they're pretty huge compared to everyone before them. And with this, I mean, the guy's literally playing someone who's being injected with chemicals to make him a super soldier. So is it really that far-fetched to think that the guy would take enhancements, you know, PDs, to get the look he needs for the role? Because they're really portraying what it is. Of course, in this, you know, that wasn't his body. They did magic to put his head on someone else's skinny guy's body because going from that to what he looked like would be pretty much impossible. But here we go. I remember seeing this scene when I went to see this movie and be like, dang, I want to look like that. That would be awesome. And that's back when I was naive and thought, oh, you know what the men's health magazine says? They work out hard. They eat a bunch of good food. And this is what you can look like. I remember buying the magazines. Yes, magazines back then before there was Instagram, before there were all the YouTube videos telling you how to do all this stuff, men's health, men's fitness. They'd have articles on these guys saying, what'd you do? I ate all these meals every day and bulked up and I did these workouts and I would buy it. I would do those workouts. Not much would change. I didn't know what I was doing back then, but it's amazing once you commit to a good program, which I put my workouts online if you wanna check it out. I've got those uh, on the channel you can see and help you out in my diet. I show you the type of things I eat and how I follow it, figure out calories, all that type of stuff because you train hard, consistently push yourself, track your progress, progressive overload to make sure you're pushing harder and making gains, eating your meals. I mean, that's the big thing. You gotta be eating enough food, the right type of food, enough protein, one gram per pound of body weight is what I shoot for every day. And of course, sleeping. A lot of people don't think about that part, but sleep is extremely important. And I've got five kids, so it doesn't make it hard sometimes, but they all sleep in most of the time now, so that's good. But don't think you can just start going to the gym if you're new and you're gonna look like Mr. Chris Evans here as Captain America because that is highly unlikely. The guy's made to look like a super soldier in this role. He's big, he's jacked, they did it well, and uh, he did that for a decade for this career. And finally, there is Thor. This also came out in 2011, and I remember watching this too and thinking the same thing. Man, I'm gonna look like him, men's fitness, men's health magazines. What'd he do? How'd he do his workout? He doesn't look overly huge to me in this one like he does in the newest Thor movie. Here, he just looks like a guy who's working out hard, been working out for years, and this is what you get with good diet and nutrition. You could achieve this. It's not easy, but it is 
possible. But then when we go here to the newest movie, Thor 4, he is huge, he's Jack. The dude looks like a bodybuilder who's getting ready for a show. He's not stage lean like bodybuilders are, five, four percent body fat, but here he's extremely lean. You see you got the veins going up the arms into the chest, big chest, huge shoulders, huge arms. This is way bigger than he looked in the original Thor movie. And don't expect to look like this. It's questionable if he even looked like this. I've got another video showing behind the scenes based on what he looked like when they were filming compared to the final product, if there was any CGI involved. It's kind of interesting to see with all the technology that's available today. But what can you achieve? Definitely those earlier physiques like Tobey Maguire, Brendan Fraser, Brad Pitt, that is all just hitting the gym and getting lean enough to see those muscles. If you put in hard work for two, three years in the gym, and I mean hard working out four or five times a week, your whole body twice a week, all the different muscles, depending on how you want to split it up, eating the right kind of food, tracking it, not going crazy with just binges and all that type of stuff. It's not an easy process, but once you get into a pattern of doing it, it's a lot easier to stick to it. Build that habit and you can make it happen if it is important to you. Maybe add on another year if you have a lot of extra fat that you need to lose because that does take time. You don't want to crash diet because you'll lose muscle. Lots of videos on all those topics, but definitely doable. But with all the changing times, your physique goals may change. And once you hit those goals, it probably won't be good enough for you anymore because it's always fun to push to something new, push to something more. Just stay safe doing it. Stay off the drugs. Do what you can naturally. Be healthy. And I will see you in the next one.